So, with the introduction of free to play, there's a lot of new players, as you can see. A lot of new players. Now, this guy is a nuisance. Lots of other people are making like other guides for leveling and stuff. This guy is just going to be a general guide just to like get introduced to the game and just all of the mechanics of the game. So, let's begin with the first uh, quest. So, once you spawn in, you'll spawn in about here. You're going to talk to Scruff. You're going to accept his quest. You're going to find two chickens. These chickens are around the, this general area, but they're mostly behind here in the chicken coop. Now, they're a bit hard to hit, so you have to get the angle right. But you want to keep killing the chickens until they drop the chicken eggs. Well, one sec, but yeah. And you just keep killing them until you get the chicken eggs. Okay, so as you can see, we got the two chicken eggs, which means we can finish this quest. So we complete Scrap's quest, and at this point, you want to talk to him again. So what this basically does is just continues the quest. So you want to, now, you want to follow the path, which is uh, from the bridge, and you just continue on until you go into the main village, which is Mush Town itself. Now, once you uh, arrive here, you want to come to here, find the guy with a question mark over his head, which is Mayor Noah, and you want to talk to him. This will complete the quest and give you a bit of money. At this point, you want to go to Abigail, you want to come do the quest, Abigail's Apples. And you can do can do, and then you come over here, and you want to, uh, and you want to, uh, and you want to come over to this apple tree and smack it. This will get you until you get 12 apples. Once you get the 12 apples, then you can complete the quest. And I'll see you when I once I get the 12 apples. So I smacked the tree for about 20 seconds, and I got enough apples. Now you want to come over back over here jump over the wall, and meet up back with the Abigail. And then you would complete the quest, and by this point you should be level 3. So next what you want to do is you want to come down here, and you want to smack this chest. And you will get this wooden sword. Now once you have this sword, you're, you're level 3 now, so you should be able to equip it. With this sword, you want to also get some money to take the money that you earn, and you want to buy a leather tunic and worn boots. Okay, so now you want to come over here, and you want to uh, you you don't really have to continue this quest because it's pointless to come all the way back here because you're almost never gonna come back here. So I suggest skipping this quest because all you need to be is level three, and then you can complete the rest of the game. So. You want to continue down this uh, path, you want to follow the path, so remember this. Go behind the mare, and there's this little path over here. Come over here, and you want to come down here, and you want to follow the signs where it says Mushroom Forest. So you continue down the path until you make it to the intersection. At the intersection, you, want, you see this sign, you see Mushroom Forest, so you continue up the path. So remember, past the wall, past the mare, and then continue down until the first right and turn right. At which point you'll be going up the hill and you follow the path until you make it to Mushroom Forest. Skip all of these quests because these are not worth your time. I'm going to be honest, the quests at the beginning of the game, once you get past level 4, it doesn't, you don't need to do them anymore because they don't give enough EXP to be worth your time. Now you go into Mushroom Forest. This is where the fun begins. You want to, uh, you want to uh, you want to just make it to the other side while killing mushrooms along the way. By the time you exit this place, you should be level seven, which is the minimum level required to go into no garp. Otherwise, you're going to be killed by the garp. So while you're moving along this forest, you want to kill these uh, mushrooms and move on. And you, the bigger the mushroom, the harder it is. So be careful. But you want to be following the path the entire time. And by the time you leave this place, as I said, you should be level 7, and you should have killed enough mushrooms to well be level 7. So I'll see you guys once we uh, finish walking along the path.
So now we arrive at the end of the path and we are in the clearing. The clearing is basically nothing, it's just the entrance to Nogar. Now here's the thing, there's this dude that will kill you instantly if you are under level 7. That's why the requirement to get into Nogarf is level 7. You can always parkour around it, but that, but for you guys, it's just easier just to be level 7. Because this is like saying, you should be level 7 at this point to make the rest of the game easier. Now, to get to level 10, my suggestion is to kill these hogs over here. You kill these hogs until you get to level 10, and at which point you're good to go for, uh, for most of the game. And because you're level 10 now, you have the ability to choose a, a class. And how you do that is you go to the Great Crossroads. I'll, sh I'll show you how to go there right now. So once you arrive in Nilgarf, the first thing you want to do is, hopefully you have enough money, you want to talk to the shopkeeper here. You want to sell items you have. So let's, for example, say I got some mushroom spores. It was most likely you're going to get from the mushroom forest. You're going to want to sell them, get some extra money. Then you also want to buy a Nilgarf room. Okay? These are very important because it lets you teleport to, to uh, back to main cities. And that's going to be very helpful. So what you want to do now is once you're in Nilgarf, you want to turn right from the shopkeeper. You want to go past here and you want to go into the Great Crossroads. This is where you get to choose your class, depending on different paths you go on. And, I'll sh and as uh, in iNitronics video, he showed the, like, the different, lo and different like, places to go, but I'll go into a bit more detail of each of the classes that you can choose. So once you go here, you're going to want to uh, kill things. And the things that you kill are going to probably be scarecrows. But this is going to be after you choose a class, but I'm just going to show it. So, for example, if you want a scarecrow over here, you want to get its attention. You want to jump over here. And, oh wait, you want to jump over here. And this makes a one-way wall. That way you can see the scarecrow and you can attack it without it attacking you. It's the best farming spot probably in the game for scarecrows because they, it's a hard, very hard for them to jump over this compared to the stone wall. Now once you go here, you're going to want to follow the path again. Paths are very important in this game. Make sure you follow them because they show you the destinations. So you're going to want to follow, uh, come to, with the path to this and you know when you're the right place when you're the crossroads in, which is this place. Then this is the three paths. You go to this straight ahead for warriors, to the right for mages, and to the left for hunters. Now you're going to be wondering, well what are the different classes, what are the difference between the different classes? So basically, mages let you uh, let you cast magic and they basically, their strengths are being staying away and also when you get into subclasses they will be able to self-regenerate mana and they can also heal themselves in two out of the three subclasses. Uh, and they also got to use different magic because, well, they're, well, mages. And they're pretty good for grinding. One of the best classes for grinding. And also the best PvP class in-game is a mage class, which is the cleric, which is stupid, but I'll get into that topic in another video. And the subclasses for mages are Warlock, the one I use. Basically, can self-regenerate mana, self-regenerate health, and also has a little puppet friend. And can do other wacky things like make this, and stuff like that. Sorcerers are in charge of elemental magic. They can make meteors, uh, like giant icicles come out of the ground, and uh, and throw giant boulders. So that's who their strengths are. But they're also pretty good because they are well AOE, which means that they can hit a lots of things at once. And finally, we have clerics. Clerics can resurrect dead people before they completely die. Uh, clerics can also uh, Create, have this move called Flare, which has a giant area of effect, and it basically heals the cleric, but also does damage to everyone else who's not their friend. And finally, they can also use, they have the ability Heal, which just allows them to heal health. But yeah, and for the warriors, the warriors uh, are in charge of like brute strength, 
their main ability, their main uh, stat is strength, and except for, and their subclasses are divided into three things: there's knight, berserker, and paladin. Paladin is a bit of like a mix of a mage war, mage warrior, because they both their stats are divided between intelligence and strength, but uh, they can also they basically can create giant swords, which is a rebuke across the ground and has a pretty big hitbox. They can also, uh, and they basically just do magic-y things as a warrior. Knights are tanky, and they're probably one of the best PvP classes, but they suck in PvE. So it's not just a good idea to, if you want to get loot in this game, to go as a knight or paladin only, because you're never going to get drops from bosses. So if you want to get a mix of good PvP and PvE, you want to go Berserker if you're going a warrior. Berserker aren't too spe Berserkers aren't too special, except they look really cool with two swords. And all Berserkers can do is basically, they can spin really quickly and that does a lot of damage. And they can do other sword things that does a, well, a lot of damage. They're more focused on offense and they're pretty good all around, uh, all around class. And finally we have the Hunters, which is going to be over here. We have the Rangers. Assassins and Tricksters. Tricksters are a funny class, you're never going to use it for PvE, but they're a funny class. That's why they're a Trickster and that's why their subclass trainer is a clown. Uh, and uh, Rangers can shoot very far away. They're one of the best classes for PvE because they do a lot of damage, except they have almost no health. At max level, they have about a thousand health, which is probably the amount of health most of you have at your level. But but honestly, clerics, I'm, I mean, rangers, they are they have abilities like sniping people and arrow rain and other amongst other things. And finally, we have uh, assassins, which can go invisible and they can make clouds of uh, shadows. And it's pretty cool ability. So if you're going to, my suggestion for your first playthrough of this game on your first save would be to uh, go as a to would be to go as a uh, to go as like probably for hunters it would be assassin or ranger for uh, for warriors I would say knight or berserker but mostly berserker because uh, paladin is a bit weird in how it like works and um, and for mages, my first playthrough of the game, I would suggest cleric. Well, all three of them are good. They're both all they're all very good classes to choose. So pick whatever you want for a mage. But yeah, that's basically all the strengths and weaknesses of all the classes. Uh, one thing you should know that in this game, lots of the game is based off your stat build. If you don't know what that is, when you press, I think it's Q for everyone, I mean K, uh, you, your stat build is basically what you invest your stats into. 10 dexterity is a must have for everyone. Don't and also never put anything into a vitality unless you're a knight. Okay, that's just a, but I hate people who put vite into their knights, so I'm just don't talk to me if you do that. But you want 10 dexterity, with the, and you're like, why 10 dexterity? It's because it gives you extra stamina, which is this green meter that when you that shows up whenever you use it, and it gives you extra movement speed, which allows you to move around the map faster. So it's pretty useful in that sense. As a mage, you're gonna want intelligence, unless you're a strength warlock, but that's a quirky build that we're gonna talk about later. And and as a warrior, you're gonna put your most of your stats into strength. And 10 dexterity, and as a hunter, you're gonna want usually minimum of 50 dex, and the rest into strength. And that's pretty much it for this game in terms of basic things. Uh, yeah. And yeah, well, all yeah, and I well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys are liking this game so far, and hopefully you stick around because. There's going to be some pretty big content updates in the future. And, yeah. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.